Welcome back to the You Can Too podcast. On today's show, we have Kristen Butler, CEO of Power Positivity with over 50 million followers globally for an amazing reason and author of The Comfort Zone. Kristen, more than grateful to have you here. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me, James. Absolutely. I just saw you. (laughs) I did. I know. I know. As I was saying earlier, it's like you're such a light and I'm more than grateful to have you here because so many people are going to resonate not only with the mission that you have for the book, but your story in general. And I want to kind of start there. Over a over a decade and a half ago, you were in your bed two weeks straight, just stuck, burnt out, lost. Can you bring us through what was going through your mind at that time and then kind of what prompted that and what prompted the the step forward? Yeah, that was like total rock bottom for me. Personally, I know everyone's rock bottom is different, but in that place, I just felt like a total failure. I hated where I was. I was full of negative emotions. And I felt so stuck. I didn't think that there was a solution to where I was. And I was usually a very solution oriented person. Yeah. So what was kind of going through your mind when you were in that place? Like what prompted you to just be kind of lost? Cause I feel for a lot of people, they're in that same position, you know, feeling like life's kind of happening to them over and over and kind of, it just prompts them into staying exactly where they are. Yeah. You know, At that time, I I felt literally like almost worthless, like I was just trying to make it from one day to the next. And, you know, to get out of that place, I had to just start feeling grateful for where I was, even if it was little things like the bed I'm laying on or, you know, the sun was out or there's people who care about me or I have a roof over my head. Mm -hmm. I think we can start rebuilding and feeling better about our day to day life when we just feel thankful for the little things. So true. The gratitude is such a, a big, a big, big aspect. Power of positivity is like a whole big part of that in itself, right? And I know you talk so much about positive lifestyle habits that reinforce kind of the life that you want to create. Can you touch a little bit on that and where that kind of started for you? Yeah, at that place, it was small things like just nourishing my body with foods that I needed to eat and not like craved. I think at that place, I was, you know, obese. And so I think that my overwork and my rejection of myself made me desire comfort. Like I was not comfortable in that place. And so I was going to comfort food. So instead I was actually asking my body, what did it need nourish nourishment wise? And what kind of movement did I, do I want to do? You know, so what kind of exercises are going to make me feel strong? You know, how much water did I have today? Like these simple things can make a huge difference. We can actually feel so stressed out or burnt out because we're not just taking care of our simple daily needs. So I think first prioritizing the things that our body needs just to feel well, and then prioritize how much fun are we having? You know, how many, how much are we going out and talking to the people we love or care about? Like, you know, how much are we getting outside and into nature or going on, uh, you know, going on a spontaneous trip or whatever brings you joy or fun, like prioritize that. That's so important, it's, especially if you work a lot. As entrepreneurs, it's our automatic <laughs> thing is to do, okay, work. Like we have every, there's no time of this is when I start, this is when I stop, unless you literally create it or you you commit to that. So it's it's a big hurdle for a lot of people. And I liked what you touched on too. There's a quote that I heard a little bit earlier today, actually, from a podcast I was listening to is that short-term gain is a long-term pain. When you go towards the comfort of what feels good now, later on in life, it usually leads you down a path that is full of unsettling, just not fulfilledness. So how do you, how do you find that kind of that balance between, you know, enjoying the journey of what it is, while also knowing that there's always going to be a next thing that you want to accomplish and maybe even feeling like you're behind, you haven't accomplished much, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think that sometimes the things that we find comfortable, are they really addictions or are they really us numbing things that would be comfortable? Because Mm -hmm. we are beings that love to experience life and expand. And that's really like our comfort zone is actually growing. You know, trees don't just stop growing because they don't feel like it. You know, there's an environment there that you need to tend to, Mm -hmm. to grow. So when you think about comfort and comfort food or like comfort habits, like chilling on the couch, is that really comfort to me in my book? I call that complacency because Mm -hmm. inaction or unmotivation is not comfort. And what's actually comfortable is growth and fulfillment and fun, you know? So 
looking at comfort differently is so important if you want to prioritize that correctly in your day-to-day -day life and mm -hmm. not looking at work as discomfort, right? Finding work that you love and balancing that so it doesn't ever feel like it's too much and it's uncomfortable. Uh, I guess it's a perspective shift because I don't like to think about um, being uncomfortable now so I can be you know, uh, being uncomfortable now so I can be comfortable later. I just make the things I'm doing like comfortable, you know? Absolutely. And I'm so glad that you bring that perspective in. That's why I got so excited to have you on the show because <laughs> that's something that I've, I haven't heard. Like I, I, you don't hear that perspective often and that's the kind of perspective we need to hear because it's true. I mean, in life, the only constant is change and change is always going to happen. So we have to find some kind of comfort in that change more so. And And you talk about it in your book, you know, the three zones of living. Can you bring us through where most people are living and how to kind of step into, you know, the zone of living that's actually going to support the life that we want to live. Sure. You know, a statistic just came out and it was that 75% of Americans uh, last month felt overwhelming stress yeah. and half of them felt like it, it's creating health problems in their lives. Like that's just, and they're having trouble sleeping. That's just alarming to me. And so most of those people are living in what I call in the book, the survival zone. They're just, you know, pushing themselves, forcing, over committing, um, and just prioritizing the wrong things. And I get it. You want the American dream and that is very ideal, but we need work-life balance or we're going to burn ourselves out and we're never going to get to where we want to go. Yes. So the survival zone is the zone of overaction. The second zone is the zone, the complacent zone. The complacent zone is when we have burned ourselves out in the survival zone and we just feel like giving up. Maybe we've had so much failure. Maybe we feel like life is too hard. Um, and in that place, that's when we're unmotivated. And we might say we don't want to grow or we don't want change, but that's not true. And when you look deeper, you're actually kind of buried with fears and securities and doubt. That's mm -hmm. not a comfortable place. You're not in your comfort zone. Uh, and then the third zone is the zone that I'm offering in the book, my favorite zone, the comfort zone. And this is where we can access positive emotion. This is where we can feel grateful. And here we have balanced action. So we're taking time for things that we love, the work that we want to do. And we're finding out what that is, right? And expanding from that place. But then we're also taking time for our needs, for our relationships, for fun. You know, that kind of balance creates a sustainable life and sustainable success. And ironically, you might think that you'll get more done in the survival zone. And you could short, short term by working like as much as you possibly can. Yeah. But it's like that, you know, that uh, fable they told us when we were kids, what about the, the rabbit and the turtle or something winning the race, right? Because you can run really fast and try to get through, but you're, you're not going to get to exactly where you want. It's not going to work. It might seem like it's going to work short term, but it's not. <laughs> it's not sustainable. That's the whole mm -hmm. purpose of it, right? You're, you're creating a new way of living, a lifestyle shift instead of just like a short term kind of spurts of intense, intense action that where a lot of people come from. I think for a lot of people, they're coming from a survival zone when, it, when they're starting, say starting a business, for example, like you with power of positivity, you see you now and it's like, you've done some truly astounding things, but I bet you at the beginning of the journey, it wasn't easy. So how did you kind of find that balance between striving and then also surrendering to where you are knowing that, you know, there's part of you that probably didn't trust the journey a hundred percent. You know, before power of positivity is when I like burnt myself out in overworking and hustling. Mm. And I had learned through so many businesses of creating so much success and then losing it all. Yeah. It was such a horrible feeling to just like have be power seller on eBay one day and then the next day, nothing. You know, I put all my worth into that, that when I started power of positivity, I didn't have that type of perspective or that hustle mentality. Mm. And I started it because I just wanted to help people and connect people and stay accountable for living a positive lifestyle. And yeah, sometimes I would work longer hours, but I loved what I was doing and I was in a flow. And when I wasn't in that flow and I wasn't feeling good about what I was doing, I needed to take time. I needed to go outside. I needed to call a friend. I needed to go out, whatever I needed to do, go to the gym. And I made sure that I had healthy habits every day when I wasn't working, mm -hmm. but I never felt burnt out. 
So what that looked like for me was going to the gym in the morning and taking care of myself and then working. So that's saying no to a Zoom meeting if somebody wants it early in the day. That's my time when I take care of myself and I still do that stuff today. You have to kind of like give yourself your windows that are non-negotiables when you're an entrepreneur and then know your negotiables and the times when you can take those meetings or you can be, be, be flexible because I'm all about being flexible also. And I'm not about having this super disciplined regiment, you know, but having consistent habits are really key to just never feeling burnt out. It's so true. And the permission aspect of it is like, for me, I was a game changer. It was like, you have to just mentally give yourself permission to not work right now. Because I know for a lot of people, they're striving, they're striving, they're striving, they're working all hours of the day, all time that they can. And then when they're not, they're thinking about they're not doing it, right? And it's, it's finding that that balance between both. And it's the comfort zone, like you, you talk about so much. I think there's a part of it, and you talk about this in your book too, the, the difference between courage and comfort, right? How do we find that kind of that balance to, you know, strive to almost step out of our comfort zone, but find that middle ground between uh, almost doing it and then still finding that uh, that passion for ourselves within it? Yeah, that's a great question. So a lot of courage actually can put us in the survival zone and we can just keep going, 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 and we feel so courageous, but where does that get us? Mm -hmm. And then no courage puts us in the complacent zone where we're just ridden with fear. We don't want to take any action. We just think that we would completely fail or we have zero courage. And so I, I offer in between that and being comfortably courageous to take enough action to move forward and to stretch comfortably, but not go so far that you probably might end up in failure because you pushed yourself too far and you were too courageous. So um, I think courage is great in certain situations, especially like survival situations or something, right. you know, and I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about living on a day-to-day -day basis because living with courage can get you through almost anything really. And you can overcome any fear. You don't need too much. So, um, yeah, I, I love that you asked that question because no one has yet. And, um, now I get to talk about it. Um, and it is so important. I have this really cool diagram in the book that kind of really illustrates where you want to be like on a courage meter, I guess. Right. Yeah, yeah. Cause everyone thinks that courage and comfort are mutually exclusive, but I don't think that they are. I think that they can meet in the middle and help you to truly thrive. It's so true. And I'm glad that I, I did bring it up because it's a perspective that not many people are thinking. Like you said, a lot of people think it's mutually exclusive. And so they kind of just erase it from it being a possibility. And that dives me or that makes me dive into like the next question I asked from a, a quote from your book. It's beliefs determine reality. Reality doesn't determine your beliefs. And this whole podcast is talking about beliefs because that's what has shaped my life. It's changed the way that I perceive, you know, the way that life presents things to me. So Tell me more about how that kind of actualized in your life and how you, you know, are talking about it in the book and have created a life that you live today. Yeah, that's a great question, James. You know, we all have beliefs and I think we're not taught necessarily to pull them out and kind of examine them and know if we actually want them. Yeah. Right. So when I was at rock bottom, I had so many beliefs that didn't serve me and I was taking them on from people that I thought I trusted, you know, and I thought that they meant well for me, but these were their limiting beliefs that they were putting on me. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I was able to choose how I wanted to feel and how I wanted to think and, you know, what beliefs I wanted to hold and which ones I wanted to let go, it was just completely life-changing. And as you said, it changed your life because we get to choose. That's the coolest part about living. Like we don't have to take a belief if we don't want to. And, you know, I did this in so many ways, but even, um, with my business and being an entrepreneur, so many people said, oh, that's too risky. Like, mm -hmm. why are you doing that? You know, you've already failed so many times in your businesses. Why would you, you know, at the time I was, did freelance work on Upwork before I started Power Positivity. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I love helping people. And this is a really cool way to be, um, to do work. I don't want the nine to five. Some people love the comfort of a nine to five and that's comfortable for them. That feels safe to me being an entrepreneur and getting to choose my schedule and do say yes to what I wanted when I didn't felt very good to me. And, you know, choosing those beliefs based on your own preferences and your own path, everyone's different. But when you realize that you can pick and choose, it's just your whole life expands. It's amazing. 
It is so true. It's so true. It's like we we see this our life as like a box that we place ourselves in. And when you change the beliefs or you drop a couple that didn't serve you, you, the box that you live in starts to expand. That's the kind of way that I like to see it. And you talk, it's the kind of a perspective that you take. It's like, we need to stay within that box, right? So that we're comfortable, but we're not stretching it to the point where it's it's keeping us where we are. That's where a lot of people are living in the, in the box that they've placed themselves in. For a lot of people, I think it's just the the ability to be aware of that, to gain the awareness and the consciousness to step out of that. Where did that start for you? To step out of knowing, um, the, like the, the perspective of realizing that you can let go of beliefs in itself. Mm. You know, I think it was just a slow process of me changing beliefs and then seeing mm. the evidence in my life and knowing that, you know, wow, this stuff really is like true. This really works. You know, I don't know if it's like time or age. I mean, you hear great advice, but you don't know until you apply it. Yeah. And then when you see it in your own life, you're like, uh, you can hold that belief. I'm good. I'm going to keep mine because I see it works. Right. And even with this comfort zone theory, try it out. You know, uh, that's what I'd say in the book, like try it out and see if it works for you because I, I'm very confident that it works because it works for me and I see it work for all kinds of people. So, um, I think just through trial and error and seeing the evidence, and then you build that confidence like anything. The more evidence you see, the more confident you feel about it. And so it's really a process, it's not an overnight thing. It takes some work, but it's amazing work. It's the right work that you want to do, right? Because it makes the results that you want to see. Absolutely. And you saying that, like, it's the proof, it's evidence. That's where confidence comes from. And there's a part of that. I know that you're a huge fan of affirmations. And I want to dive a little bit into that because I know there's so many different perspectives that people have on affirmations. But the words that we tell ourselves, the words that, you know, come up for us when we're not thinking about what we're thinking about really control our lives. So, so that, tell me like a little bit more about how affirmations have played a role in your life. Yeah, we're all telling ourselves affirmations, whether we want to believe it or not. And so whether you want to buy into it and create your own affirmations or not, um, you already are. So um, for me, it was just kind of examining how I thought about myself in my life. And then asking myself, do, do I want this? Mm -hmm. It's really that simple. You know, um, if you think you're not good at math, but you want to be, you have to examine that belief system. Have you been telling people you're not good at math or do you need to be for a job that you want to pursue? You know, it's really about knowing yourself, knowing where you, where you are and where you want to go. And then examining those beliefs, because if you feel stuck, you're going to have beliefs that are keeping you there. And if you want to move from that, first, you have to change the beliefs because so many people are just taking the action, taking the action, and they're spinning their tires because they haven't changed the beliefs. Yeah. And those are affirmations. Those are the things you're telling yourself about yourself and your life. And so if you want more money, you have to believe that you're worthy of it and you have to change your limiting beliefs about money. Do you have a belief that um, people who have a lot of money are greedy? Some people, a lot of people have that oh, yeah. or the belief that, uh, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. So if you have these limiting beliefs around money, you're going to keep money from you. You want to make money, your friend, as awkward as that sounds, you know, there's all kinds of, you know, I'm going to share this. There's all kinds of um, songs on YouTube that, you know, for money to change those belief systems. Yeah. It really works. Like I remember we were just coming out of bankruptcy and we were trying to save money. And I saw this, um, I'm a magnet to money, you know, song on YouTube. It was so corny, really yeah. so corny. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what, what am I going to lose? I'm going to try this. And I would dance to it and sing to it like daily. We started to collect hundreds in our savings and then thousands in our savings when at almost my entire life, I could never save money no matter how much I worked. So it's just really changing those belief systems in the direction that you want to go. And those are affirmations. I know you were talking about affirmations, but it's really the same one and the same. No, it is. It is. The, uh, a framework that I've liked to see it as is that belief drives behavior mm. in life, right? They go hand in hand, like behavior drives belief as well, but you can behave in ways that make you want to believe for as long as you want. But if the belief still isn't there, then you will self-sabotage. You will yeah, start love turning that. your wheels. And that's, exactly. that will always find a way to get in the way. So affirmations have played a big role. I know vision boards have also played a big role in kind of really mapping out what that would even look like of kind of creating that, that next level of, of life. Dive a little bit into like what that looks like for you. 
I love visualizing and dreaming. And so visualizing and creating a vision board is like actually physically creating it. So it's taking it from your imagination. And when you do that, you're actually putting energy into the creation of what you want. So it's so important that you visually create a vision board. Um, but so many people get stuck on vision boards. And I think that that is often because they are looking too far ahead and it doesn't feel realistic. So even when they're looking at it, they might be like, oh, well, I want to look at that, look like that, you know, if it's a, the body that they want. But then they feel insecure about it because mm -hmm. it's not where they are. And so in our community, I saw that so many times that in my book, I created the comfort zone vision board. And what that is, is that you actually put the things that you have accomplished in the inside. And you build a bridge from where you are, your comfort zone, to where you want to be, the things that are outside of your comfort zone, but you want them. And when you build these kind of bridges and when you're looking at it, it feels more realistic to you. And it feels like, wow, you know, I'm not too far from that. And so you can take that resistance out immediately because the resistance is always what's holding us from where we want to be. Mm -hmm. So true. I know you've done some some work in NLP and kind of diving into the subconscious. How has that played a role in the way that, you know, you have been able to surrender instead of always finding that reason to strive? Because at the end of the day, entrepreneurs in general, that's our automatic response is I'm going to strive for the next goal, for the next goal, for the next goal. Yeah, I really think it's important to enjoy the journey. So when you surrender to the process and you enjoy the journey, it's not just getting that next goal, but along the way, it's feeling good. Like writing this book, every step of the way has felt so good. Writing the book and creating the cover and now promoting the book. So it's like each step, I don't think too far ahead because it can feel overwhelming and I don't look too far behind because that's not where I am. I just kind of stay in that present moment. I think the more we focus on the present moment, the, the better we feel, you know? So true. So true. I think a lot of us project where we'd like to be and it kind of takes away the joy from where we are. Uh, one of my favorite quotes I've heard recently is like, I, or at least a perspective was just to smell the, smell the roses more throughout the journey. Uh, cause it's, it's so easy to look at the next thing that we want to do. It's so easy to look at, you know, the next thing that we want to, we want to strive after, but we, we neglect to realize how far we've already come. And I think for you, even like starting from, and I, I think of me too, cause I remember there was a time in my life where I couldn't get out of my bed. Like it was, it was to that point and it was, and it's often tough to like, think about that time because I'm always thinking about, okay, what about the next thing that I want to do? And so it's, it's, I often forget of how far I've come. So where has reflection kind of played out in your life and how has that, you know, shifted your mindset on the whole journey of entrepreneurship, business, uh, and just the way that you live your life? Yeah, I think when I reflect, it just gives me so much insight and gives me a perspective that I'm able to offer to others to help them. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the only time that I look back because yeah. it's like, no, I don't want to feel shame because it's made me who I am today and it's helping other people. And obviously my journey was to experience that so that I can have this new perspective. So if we can look at it like that, instead of shaming ourselves, like, wow, I really messed up back then, or, you know, oh my gosh, can I, can I really move forward in a way that's better than where I was? But knowing that it's every step is part of the journey and it's going to make you who you are. It's going to develop your perspective and it can help other people. Yeah. I think one thing that does play out in our lives pretty often is we do come from a place of shame. And I think that that's what holds most of us back from achieving anything in life because we don't come from a place of love. We come from a place of shame, resentment, guilt, stress, anxiety, all of the emotions that, you know, we would really rather not feel. How, how have you been able to, coming from the beginning and, and seeing you now, it's like you're a different person almost. Your identity has shifted. And that's one of the most fulfilling feelings that you can feel. But to bring me through your internal narrative in the beginning of that journey, stepping into, you know, a whole different kind of mindset for life. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just overnight. It was just everyday steps and actions that felt good, that were kinder, that, you know, I was kinder to myself, kinder about the way I thought about other people, because I realized like, wow, sometimes you can be very dramatic or negative about a situation. And was that really the right perspective? So seeing life in a kinder lens and a better lens and a more positive lens, if you'll say, and then seeing myself and then seeing where I can go just in a very much more positive way. And so it's not going to just be this magical journey overnight that's going to change because you've done some affirmations. But when you look back from one month, one year, five years, 10 years, you're like, wow, this is huge. This really, really works. You just have to have that consistency. And I think sometimes people 
think that it's going to change in a day or a week or a month. And then if it doesn't, they give up and they're like, oh, I'm just going to be a realist or a pessimist because that stuff is just, you know, I, you know, I expect it. And then I feel disappointed, but you have to know that the journey is a process and that you can get to where you want to go, but you just have to keep going and stay consistent and be yeah. real with yourself. Sometimes I think we think we're being consistent, but we're not. <laughs> You know, I think it's important too, to realize when you're consistent in the wrong things too, you know, because yeah. it, it goes one way or it goes another way. And you have been consistent for a long time, you know, all, in this space, connecting with some amazing people, you being one of them, what has been the lesson that's taken you the longest to learn? Wow. The lesson that has taken the longest to learn. Oh my gosh. To pause sometimes. I don't know. I don't know. Like even when I'm talking and I'm doing this media, they're like, Kristen, just pause, right? Mm. You can pause between a really epic statement. I'm like, I can? Oh, because I'm always go, but I feel good and I feel super passionate. So I, that balance of like, pause, let it sit. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, got to drink my tea a little slower. Same. Maybe got to walk a little slower, do my chores a little slower, right? So it's a learning process to be a little slower and pause. And it's so important really, because when you're excited and passionate about something, it's like, Go, 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 right? And that work-life balance is super important. And just that balance in everything you do is important. Yeah. For those that may not be in a, I want to say a perfect position, but an ideal position, let's say, and they're trying to find that balance between striving, between surrendering and enjoying the process and also achieving their goals, knowing that there's probably some innate stress that's within them. How do they find that? How do they cultivate that within themselves? Wow, I think there's so many ways. And in the book, I talk about, you know, meditation, you know, or grounding yourself. Um, everybody has, you know, different preferences, but whatever feels safe for you, whatever is a calm thing for you, if that's reading a book, if that is being around people who make you feel good, you know, whatever that is, prioritize that. It's just so important to get to know yourself. I don't think we spend enough time getting to know ourselves and what actually makes us feel comfortable. And oftentimes if we don't know what's comfortable for us, truly comfortable, and we're shaming ourselves, we're going to go to things that we think are comfortable and then start developing addictions, you know, and things like that to where we're searching for comfort, but we're finding the wrong things that bring us comfort. So knowing yourself, finding that space and then going to that space when you need to, because I think sometimes we'll feel stressed. And then we don't do the things we want to do because we feel stressed. We need to remind ourselves, maybe that walk would make us, you know, feel better and get us back in the flow. It does for me all the time. Like, I'm like, Ooh, okay. I've hit my boundary. Like I have certain boundaries to know like how I feel and like, Nope, I'm going for a walk or, you know, I'll have to cancel something or whatever, because otherwise, boom, you know, you're going to take yourself over the edge. So true. It's so true. That's been one of the most powerful things for me is walking, like just yeah. like literally giving myself permission to go do that thing. Because when we push ourselves too hard, it almost gets to a point where, you know, we, we suffer, we create self-suffering within ourselves and it, it doesn't need to be that way. And I think a lot of people, like you said earlier, like 75% of people are just stressed, overwhelmed and going through the motions of life that they don't deserve to go through. I'm curious for you, like knowing that the self-image and kind of the role that you've, you've been able to shift within yourself starting from a position where you looked at yourself in such a different light and now you literally are a light in this world. Oh. How did that kind of shift for you? And, 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 cause I know for me, self-image, the way that I perceive myself, like one of my favorite books, I recommend to everyone is psycho cybernetics. I know you have it uh, as well. How has that shifted throughout your life and how has that played a role in your, your success in business and life as well? I mean, yeah, at my lowest point, you know, it was like, I looked at myself in the mirror and I hated what I saw. I even like got contacts and changed the color of my eyes. Like, why would I do that kind of stuff? You know, but I, I hated what I saw. And so I had to really rebuild that relationship with myself and love the parts of me that I didn't love. And that was a, a huge undertaking really, but it just, it makes such a huge difference. Like loving on yourself, no matter what, it, what part of you, you don't like, you know, it's just so important to nourish yourself. So when you love yourself, you can love other people and then you gets reflected back. Like, I feel like everything in life is a mirror. And if we see it that way, when things aren't ideal, we can turn the lens in and say, wait, okay, what do I, I didn't like that. I need to do some healing. What do I need to fix? And I know that also sounds like a lot of pressure on your own self, like, especially when your life is what it is. Yeah. And that's the important part. A lot of times there's a lot of healing there. So much healing. I had so much healing that I had to do. And with each time I felt better and better. Like healing is, seems like a scary thing, but it's really actually so powerful and releasing actually. 
It's so true. I mean, it's healing is a lifelong process. It's never going to end. Like you said, it's like, and nothing ever happens overnight, but the things that matter the most are the things that we need to put the most importance on and healing being one of them. And it's, I think for a big part of it is just asking different questions. Um, it, it'll, it'll change the way that you, you view your life. Cause instead of asking, why is this happening to me? I ask, how is this happening for me? Like that was a, I asked that and simply asking that question, it sounds silly, but it changed the way that I see every single bad thing that happened in my life to turning it into something that was good. Yeah, I love that. That's perfect. And then like being instead of doing, that's even like all these little tiny things that people are like, that's really the same thing. No, it's not actually. Mindset shifts are huge. You're like, oh, wow. It just makes a huge difference. It's the biggest. And knowing that, I'm curious because questions are something that I always reflect on throughout my day. I just ask myself better questions when I'm feeling in a state of insufficiency or whatever that may be. If you had a question by your bedside table, you had a sticky note and you had to read it every single morning, what would that question be? I think, how can you serve? I think I, I do really think about how I can serve every day in some way, whether that is, you know, my kids, the community, uh, you know, the people that are reading the book, just anything. I, I just feel like waking up in service is so important because it takes the lens off of us and it puts it on other people. And, you know, even doing public speaking things that I've been doing, it's like, it's about them, not you. And by taking that lens off of yourself and the pressure off of yourself, you're like, oh, I'm serving. And it just, it's just such a, a, a great shift in your mindset and makes such a huge difference in the way that you act during the day because it's for other people. And I think we're here for other people and to serve the world. Fully true. Fully, fully true. I think for a lot of people, they're trying to figure out themselves in itself, right? We have to figure out our relationship with ourselves. That's the foundation. And then we step into serving other people because that's, yes. that's our purpose for being here. I know you spoke on, you know, a little bit about um, affirmations. Uh, you spoke on walking and, and meditation and all of those kind of things, but what has been the biggest impact or what has had the biggest impact on you and changing your relationship with yourself? Yeah, I think self-love and gratitude, that's two things, but it's really hand in hand, you know, um, gratitude is just so important. And when you put that into your body and every cell of your body, you just live every day, literally feeling better. I mean, sure, I can have bad times and bad moments or, you know, bad days. But when I look from a gratitude lens, I can take those bad moments and feel better about it. And there's, there's always that perspective that's available for us. And it's just, to me, probably the biggest life-changing um, thing that I've done is gratitude. And I still do it. You know, when I'm feeling stuck, like, okay, what can I be grateful for? And I know that's so simple. It's free to do, but it works. <laughs> it's free. As you say, it's free. Anyone can do it at any moment in time. And I, I, I'm so glad that you put the quotations when you say bad days, because there's never a bad day. It's what you label it as. There's no, exactly. good, there's no, there's no good or bad. There's just what you label it as. And I, I see it as like, I'll have a bad moment and I can consider it as a bad moment, but that's literally me labeling the situation in itself. And we create so much self-inflicted suffering for ourselves, knowing that, not knowing that, because a lot of people just aren't aware that that's happening in their lives. It's not playing out. The self-awareness is such a big aspect throughout, you know, this journey. I know you've just surrounded yourself with some amazing people that have allowed you to step into this space a little bit more. What has allowed you to really increase your self-awareness and be able to sustain this long-term? Because you've been in it for decades, like that in itself. Yeah. You know, I think when I was able to have a coach, so um, Bob Proctor about, what was it now? It's been a little over two years. So this is when he was still here. Um, I did his one year coaching. And so I did his coaching. That was a weekly thing. And then I had um, a coach that worked with him, Cleona O'Hara. Mm -hmm. And it was really amazing because I had already made so much progress and so much success, but I was always tuning the lens inward and trying to do it myself. And I made leaps and bounds when I hired a coach, you know, when I was able to do that. So I wouldn't recommend it when someone's doing something early on, maybe look for a group um, where you could like a, create a mastermind yes. where you can yes. get that kind of feedback. But um, you know, this is me, you know, 12 years into power positivity, hiring a coach. Some people do it sooner, but uh, it made a huge difference because I had blockages around selling books, and, you know, all kinds of things where um, she's like, no, it's serving. It's not selling, you know, these little tweaks where I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right, you know. And then, you know, and it, it's just when someone else can provide you feedback in whatever way that is, 
It's just so powerful. And you can literally make quantum leaps. Like I'm about like taking small steps, but when you ask for help or you have a mentor or a group of people that you trust and you trust their opinion, you can make quantum leaps in that. And over the last two years now, I think in June, it's going to be three books. Um, and that is just because I have so many coaches and mentors around me now that are helping me and I'm identifying where my skill sets could be improved and it's making such a huge difference. And I feel even more fulfilled actually, but you have to be ready to take that feedback and then take action on the feedback. So true. And I'm, I'm glad that I, cause I asked that question cause I knew that you, you talked about Mar Marissa Peer, Bob Proctor, like some of the greats that have really been yeah. in this space that for me, coaching has been, it's why I am a coach because I found it is such an impact on me that I was like, I know that I am a few steps ahead of a couple people and I can support them in their journey because the feedback is a big thing. I mean, when you get clarity and you get, you see what's not working, what is working. And even when we spoke about it, I was like, you'd be doing a disservice by not selling your book into the world because people need it. People can resonate with your journey that no one else has. And it's like, you're one of one. And I always like to reinforce that to so many people uh, because no one else can bring what you bring to the world. And taking that perspective always is, is just going to serve you in the long run. And that's gives service to other people as well. Yeah. Coaching is so powerful. And I'm sure you see like with your clients, like the, the leaps and bounds that they can make mm -hmm. when they actually take action on what you, you know, suggest, you know, so first getting that feedback, but then you got to take the action and that takes some courage, but you can do it comfortably too, because I've, I've been being coached from my comfort zone and expanding it. You know, I'm kind of in the growth, uh, yeah. the edge of my growth, you know, edge of my comfort zone growing, but that's just the phase that I'm in right now. And everybody's in different phases. So true. It's so true. I, f I find it as like, you're always telling yourself a story and you can't gain awareness of that story unless someone else, an outside perspective can give you clarity on the excuses that you're always telling yourself by the stories that you're telling yourself. And I find that that's one of the most impactful things that we can experience in our lives. And a lot mm -hmm. of that comes from books as well. It's just giving you different perspectives on the way that you live your life. There is one question, the last question I ask every guest that comes on the show, it kind of encapsulates what I'm trying to do with this podcast. And it's, the question is, what belief are you currently unlearning? Wow. What belief am I currently unlearning? The people want to hear what I have to say, <laughs> you know, because I'm doing so much more like speaking and podcasts and, you know, turning that video on. And before I had the limiting belief that maybe people really don't want to hear what I have to say. And so um, I just keep reminding myself, like you have value, you know, people want to hear what you have to say. And so I think I'm really like overcoming that but I'm sure there's still like here and there little bits of that, that that's been like the main theme in launching this book. Like, remember Kristen, you're helping people. People want to hear what you have to say. It's so true. I'm grateful that you brought that perspective in. Cause again, it's like I say, I, it's been the foundation of me working with people or just this podcast in itself is like, there's absolutely no one that can bring what you can bring to the world. And knowing that in itself, you'd be doing a disservice. That's the only way that you can look at it. Cause anything else is just shaming yourself for, for doing something that is actually serving the world. And that's your mission that, like I say, so more than grateful to have you here, Kristen. Thank you so much for coming on the show. All of your links will be in the show notes. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you so much, James. I appreciate it.